Previously on the PBR. Oh! Oh! J.B. Mooney, Pearl Harbor. <laughs> wow, he sends him into the steel here. All the credit goes to Pearl Harbor. I'm not real happy with myself. The sport, Cowboys win. The babies go home. So an 0 for 2 weekend for the world number one after winning last week. Shane Proctor, your winner. Proctor handles him. Football is finished and baseball has yet to begin, so the Chiefs and Royals fans are set to flock to the PBR this weekend. The cornerstone of the Power and Light District gets to showcase and harness the power of Championship Sunday. Defending PBR World Champ Cooper Davis is in command in Kansas City. After a slow start to the season, he's already applied the pressure with his round one win, and son Maxton is along for the ride. We welcome you inside final two rounds of our time in the KCMO. Let's show you our world standings after one round. Jess Lockwood still in that number one spot, but there's a reason. We have highlighted the defending PBR world champ with his round win. He has moved from 11th to 7th now in the world standings, and he is with Gabe Garcia. We just heard that Cooper is having a slow start to the season. He's 7 for 19 on his bulls, and yet, that is the exact same stat that you had in the 2016 season when you won the world championship. What can you glean from this? I had an excuse to ride that pole last year, uh, and I don't this year. So uh, we got to pick it up like we did last year and uh, hit the gas pedal. What was the excuse? Uh, I had a messed up wrist last year, but this year I, I didn't have any excuse in the world. <laughs> so we can expect great things from this point forward. I expect them. All right, perfect, Craig. That's a great answer, and I know, Justin McBride, you like to hear an answer like that, that no one expects him to ride more than himself. Fabiano Vieira is going to start us off in section one aboard Insane Hurricane. We're also going to get a chance to check in with a number of other riders, including Stetson Lawrence. But on our first matchup for the first time tonight, let's check in with JWR. Guys, yeah, this, you know, Fabiano's got Insane Hurricane. Uh, I, I didn't know the bull. I know you guys probably didn't know much about him either, but Fabiano does have the lowdown on him because Kai Kicheco was 87 and a half on this bull earlier this year in Denver, Colorado at Turin Pro. He likes his match. He says he's, he knows the bull and looking forward to it. The Iron Man has weighed in, so two-time PBR World Think of this pairing. Well, to JW's point, these guys, if one of them has been on the bull, this is a close group. Fabiano, Kaiki, all the guys, they help each other out. They got, they've given Fabiano the playbook on this bull, so I think he's probably going to be pretty confident in it. The thing to always keep in mind with Fabiano, he's got two bad shoulders. If he does not stay in perfect shape, he will go ahead and find a spot to get off because he's always in the back of his mind protecting his shoulder. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the shoulders because earlier today in that 1515 bucking battle, we talked about Fabiano when he was out against Brutus. And you've noticed hesitancy at times from him in how he reacts, or at least to the maximum that he reacts. Yeah, it's just if he ever starts getting in kind of a compromising situation, uh, the, the kind of a situation that it takes just going for it and giving it everything you got, throwing caution to the wind, he's not willing to do that because he knows if he lands wrong on those shoulders, he's out. And his Two rides may just point to that fact. The two rides already this weekend. One bucked off at 7.93. The other, Brutus, that we saw on CBS earlier today, over six seconds. And that's to your point of not being able to finish it with that final commitment. Yeah, but, but as good as Fabiano can ride, long round bull like this, I think he stays in perfect position. Well, Fabiano did not hear your last comment. Insane Hurricane with really not much effort able to get the Brazilian off his back. I should have said it louder, man. So he <laughs> gave him that extra boost of confidence. But you can see the bull gets him set back. And as this bull moves forward around the corner, he never does get up front. He stays behind everything. And when you're back, you've just got no chance. 
sixth event of the year, but if you're a new fan to bull riding, let's remind you of some of the basics in terms of scoring a ride. It starts with eight seconds, as well as the fact that you can never touch that bull with your free arm. Holding on with one hand, the other one's your free arm. As you said, you cannot touch it, the ground or the bull. Uh, half the score comes from your bull, how good he is. The other half is how well you can ride him. Perfect score, 100. We've seen 96.5, four different occasions. That is the top score ever in the history, the 24-year history of the PBR. This is Cody Nance, who bucked off in round number one here in round two. He gets a chance at right turn Clyde. I'm going out on a limb here, Craig. This bull's going to go to the right. Cody Nance, though, has got to get it going, man. This is a guy that he had a DQ a few events back from having his spurs in his rope, and I think that's really affected him. He's really been in a funk ever since that. This guy's got to get a little bend in his leg. Quit worrying about his spurs so much. Cody Nance, a seven-time winner on tour, but as Max hinting at, he just has not been what he would consider his normal self of late. We got a brief glimpse of his good friend, 2004 PBR World Champ Mike Lee there in the aqua blue shirt, helping him. A few different shades of blue, not 50, but a number of different shades. On the clock, needs to nod. Right turn, Clyde Mack, as you had stated, aptly named, but it was the fake to the left and then the back to the right. That got Cody Dance off. Now, we're going to talk about the end of this ride after we watch it back here, because it was really wild. But man, there was good stuff happening right here, round to the right. This is what Nance was needing right here. Something really good, Buck. He's not thinking too much. He's just riding. That looks good. And then when the bull kind of takes off on him, he gets reared back again. You're going to hear us talk about it all day long. When you get back, the bull's forward momentum. Man, this is close. It steps all around him, if not on him. Check this out. Well, and this is the aftermath I know that eventually you want to get to because this bull went after Frank Newsom. Frank doing his job along with Jesse Byrne, and wow. Just splits him. Splits his arm right there, and able, it looks as though, to avoid any serious collision, although then the horns come flying in, and Jesse and Frank and Shorty all there to keep Cody Nance safe. There's Frank Newsom right there. Frank getting highlighted for the crowd here inside Sprint Center, and rightly so, all three of those bullfighters day in, day out, reliable. Derek Kolbaba, his chance to get something finally going, he faces Booby too. Yeah, this a, should be a good bull, JW. You're telling me this is a full brother to a bull we both know, the great bull Booby Child. Yeah, you should know his daddy. Wow. You all right, you all right. Voodoo. Looks a lot like him, too, I was man. just going to say, hey, hey, Voodoo, too, throwing a lot of magic Cole Baba's way. j Dove, I'm with you now, man, after getting to see that bull. He, he does remind you a lot of Voodoo Child. He's got a, got a pretty wicked corner on him. He gets Cole Baba out of shape. That's a good bull, j Dove. Really good bull. And I misspoke there. I said it might remind you of his daddy. They're actually full brothers. Have the same mama, same daddy. The same look, too, Justin. They, and they buck a lot alike. 43 and three quarters, the score for Voodoo 2. Could have maybe even been higher. This is now Gage Gay, who gets a chance to cut his teeth and get the first score of the weekend for him in Kansas City aboard Cut the Court. Talking to the guys in the locker room, a lot of them really like this matchup right here. Thought this is a bull that should fit Gage, said he's really good either direction. They said don't count on him going to the right or the left. He'll mix it up, he's about 50-50, so big time shot for Gage. Well, and Shorty Gorham, checking with you for the first time tonight. Gage Gay came ever so close aboard Redbone last night, didn't he? Yeah, he did a great job. That's a veteran bull, Redbone is. It's kind of slowing down a little bit, but but uh, felt that he was getting beaten. Just gave him a huge roll, and it worked. But uh, look for Gage to turn it around. This is a guy that we've talked about having having some struggles in the years past. Uh, kind of getting his season turned around and getting back to riding like the Gage Gay that we know and that we've expected so much of. I remember Gage in his rookie year, Justin. You and I actually talked a lot about him and some of the similarities that he had to J.B. Mooney. Uh, that kind of went away, but this is this is a good bull right here, and he's going to get it turned around. Look for Gage. He's got to stay forward. You talked about it with uh, Cody Nance earlier. Uh, there, there's two ways to go at these bulls. You can sit there and let those bulls move and be on defense. That doesn't work very often. You've got to be right in that front end and be on offense. That's how you win money. 
It is such a great and simplistic way to put it, isn't it, Mac? I mean, whenever you sort of, whether you're on the Mighty Bucky or when you diagram things, when you break down these rides, it really tends to be what Shorty just mentioned. Guys that stay on the offensive are usually going to come out the victor in the pairing. Well, yeah, and, and you can set and break the tape down over and over and point out all these little intricate details. But at the end of the day, as a rider, when you're down there in the thick of it, there's only a few things that you've got to control. Every time the bull's front end comes up, you can't back away from that. And if you get to one side or the other, you've got to get back in the middle. And when you can keep it that simple, that's when you can really do some good. Matt Triplett there, who's out of round number two because of a shoulder injury. Shane Proctor also there helping him out. It has been a very tough weekend in Kansas City as we run down the list of men who will not be competing in round number two. It has been brutal so far, man. These guys have been banged up. A lot of them, you can see concussion, concussion, concussion. I mean, it, it has been a tough week for these guys. One guy we will see later on is Ryan Dirty. I had a chance to talk to him a little bit earlier, and he got, he had a re-ride, first of all, in, in, in the round, and not only got hit once, but twice, both on his hips, on his, in his head, got kicked in the head, and he's the one that's in. I mean, that was one of the more gruesome Remember Mac ones that we actually saw in these visions. Yeah, man, and I think that speaks to Dirt Eater's toughness and the chance that he knows he's got. This is a guy that's really starting to ride well. Hey, we talked before the show tonight, and if we have time, please get into it, about your preparation on how you pre-sat what the All right, Tuck the cord sends Gage Gay flying into the final little kick. Be interested to see if if we'll see re-ride flags out of this. Shorty, you heard Shorty yeah, call it, it. The bull hit himself. himself, and now it's up to the not judge. Did that cause the buck off or not? I'm always there's the contact. Yep, see the contact right there. Now, did that cause Gage Gay to get bucked off? That's what the judge is going to be looking for. Another look there. You can clearly see the left hip. And then the change of direction. So, I mean, Shorty, have you seen any rewrite flags yet? No, you know, and, uh, the guys behind the chute were telling Gage to hit the button. He wanted to watch it back on the replay. But one thing you got to remember is there's a time limit that runs out. If you don't hit that button right away, you run out of time, you can't hit it. So Gage let that one go. All right, well, there will be no second chance for Gage Gay in round number two. And so far, we have yet to have a qualified ride. PBR Built Ford Tough Series on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ford F-Series. Visit PBR.com slash Ford for your chance to win a 2017 Ford F-150 and a trip to the PBR World Finals in Vegas. By Las Vegas, proud host of the 2017 PBR Built Ford Tough World Finals. And by B&W Trailer Hitches, makers of the number one selling gooseneck hitch in America and the official hitch of the PBR. Around standings, well, they're all still to ride. The guys who were the top of round number one, Cooper Davis, Eduardo Aparecido, Shane Proctor, Stetson Lawrence, and Ryan Dirty. We've talked about how it's been a tough weekend for the top riders, including our world number one, Jess Lockwood. For more, let's go to Leah. We're going to go back earlier to the 15-15 bucking battle, and Jess Lockwood had drawn a bull, which was uh, Sweet Pro's long john. As a matter of fact, he got stepped on at the end of that ride and had such a deep bruise that Dr. Tandy Freeman examined him today and said if you can't bend your knee to a certain degree then we're not going to let you get in because there's an opportunity that if you hit it again that you could have a clot in there so he is still probable for next weekend well and mac i'll, I'll speak for myself i find that very interesting I, we talk a lot of course about the sports medicine team and the great job that they do we've also talked a lot about the concussion testing and everything the protocol that riders have to go through before being able to pass but i've never heard what Leah just mentioned in terms of Tandy saying you're going to jeopardize clotting or you know forcing other you know, things in your body if you can't bend the leg a certain amount. Yeah, and, and uh, that would be more than enough information yeah, for me. All, right. All, I never really cared about the details. All I needed to know was a yes or no from Tandy, and I was going with that. J Dub, it's Rubens Barbosa with his chance against Shoot Boss. What do you think? I like this matchup, and I like Rubens' style here as of late. But Justin, you probably remember this Bulls' daddy. Chance, a great friend of ours, Tom T. Grays. This is the son of him. This is a good bull. Should be right here to right, right into the Ruben's hand. I like the matchup, guys. Barbosa disqualified in round number one for taking too much time in the shoots. 
That was a pretty good opportunity for him. He was a top frequent flyer in the 15-15 bucking battle earlier. He faced Pearl Harbor, and another great out from Pearl Harbor, by the way, 46 and a quarter. Absolutely, the front runner so far from Bully Yip. Rubens needs to take advantage of this one right here after not getting out of the shoot in round one, coming down in 15-15, good draw. Rubens Barbosa checks all the boxes, and just like you guys telegraphed, the world number two does what he's supposed to do. Hey, and that was a really good bull. JW nailed it with the matchup right there. That's a great little bull. Here's what I like about, Bar about Barbosa. He rides the bulls he's supposed to ride. He's a lot like Eduardo, you know, nothing real flashy, but that's a good ride right there, man. Really good. This guy is so tough on bulls that go to the right, and he's getting better on bulls that go to the left. And I think, Mac, you know, look, when we go into the locker room and we talk to these guys, and more importantly for me at least, look them in the eye, you can tell he is just more confident this year. He's confident, and he's enjoying the process. He's happy to be here right now. Now we get to check in with a first-timer, Claudio Montagna Jr., the Brazilian, his first event ever on the Built Ford Tough Series. A lot of talk about this rider down in Brazil. And that, my friend, is the second example this weekend why already Around one score, he moves a full bull ahead of the competition. He's a perfect two for two. And I gotta tell you, from what I've got to see out of the first two go rounds of competition, I like everything about this guy. I've seen him ride bulls either direction now. His shoot procedure's been spot on. I can't wait for the championship round and see him on a little bit better bull. Well, I was gonna say, I mean, not, this might be too quick to make this comparison, but visually just a little bit like Silvano Alves the first couple years he was here. That's the exact same riding style. You can see he probably did spend a lot of time watching Silvano and has adopted the same kind of riding style. Looks good. Claudio Montagna Jr. moves to second in the round, but more importantly, first in the event. We're all headed towards the top 15 in the championship round a bit later on. This is, this is Mason Lowe. Exeter, right in round number Missouri one, and he Cowboy. couldn't take the lead with this right one because this is a golden go, opportunity go. for HD. Great bull right here, go both directions. Mason, I talked to him a little earlier, he is pumped to have this bull. Mason he knows the Lowe. opportunity that he's got right here. Anytime night, you see a bull that's a ridden boy, more than not on the Bill Ford Tough Series level, that's one the riders like. And ridden for events. good scores. Hot mid now to high end scores. We love those kind of bulls the in the long round of the the uh, competition because you set yourself Mitch up for the championship Marshall. round. Missouri's own hey. Mason Lowe Perfect. wasn't the best dismount, but what a great ride it was. You could expect the judges to be impressed as well. Mason Lowe has got a lot of ability. This guy has got great balance. Here's what I love about this ride. He kept great control over his free arm. He never let it whip too far. Anytime it did go a little far, he got it back squared up. That was a real heads up ride by Lowe. 85 and three quarters. That's gonna slot him a little behind Montagna Jr. for the overall. But let's send it to Leah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what a bull with such great timing can do for you. Man, uh, last night I had a one I had pretty good timing away from my hand too, and uh, I'm just making sure that I ride him past the whistle instead of just jumping off as soon as, the, as soon as it blows. Well, what he is doing, Craig, is he's putting his head down and getting out of the arena. Yeah, and it's, it, his patience has been notable as well, Mac. We've talked about that with him a couple different times. Stetson Lawrence got the job done, by the way, in round number one. He faced bad water. That was good enough for fourth in the round. And he has been paired up with Clevenger here. Yeah, his bull rope broke when he was putting it on in that first four. He had to just borrow the bull rope real quick. That goes to show you. Hey, hey, hey. Keep rolling, keep rolling. You're good. Max right there you could hear it stetson lawrence does not pair with clevenger very well no not very well at all that's a really good bull too they told me that's a pretty nice bull he kind of hangs his horn and just says yeah i'll turn back right here and be steep about it 
was an impressive bull, man. He was in a tight spot, too. What a difference a day makes. And Stetson Lawrence, he had J.W. Harris there in the blue shirt helping him in the shoots, but over the front end, gets a little horn, and then tastes some dirt, all within 2.08 seconds. We've got three qualified rides so far in round number two. Rubens Barbosa is your bad boy more lead dog, but it's his compatriot, Claudio Montagna Jr., who leads the event. Brazilian sensation Kaiki Pacheco fell just short of a PBR world title last November in Las Vegas. Can this young star make a run beginning tonight? On this night, there is no denying Pacheco. Pacheco converts all day long. He's coming up next as the PBR rides on from Kansas City. From hoops to hockey, the diamond to the gridiron, the morning's most outrageous team has you covered. Don't miss Boomer and Carton, presented by Gillette Pro Shield. Weekday mornings starting at 6 Eastern on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Time to bring in the B&W Trailer Hitch's leaderboard, which will be scrolling at the top of our screen at various times throughout our telecast, an easy way for you to know exactly who is placed where and what their scores are throughout the telecast. One guy who is up on that leaderboard because, well, he didn't ride in round one, but he did a great job, Mac, in the 15-15 bucking battle earlier today. Kite Pacheco gets Moto Moto. Yeah, Moto Moto throws a lot of moves at him. Pacheco just refuses to give up. Finally, the bull settles into the right-hand spin. He handles him with ease. The only qualified ride in the 15-15 bucking battle this weekend. Valuable points helping him move up into third or, or excuse me, fourth overall in the world standings. Here, though, he's got another, another great chance at points aboard the middle seat. Yeah, and J.W. Hart, this is, I'm waiting for this guy. Number four is not a bad place to be, but we all thought at the beginning of the year he would be in the number one spot and everybody chasing him. I think he's in the catbird seat, really. I think he's a sneaker. Not all the press is on him. He had not bothered with it. But this is going to be right in the gate in the right real fast. Kaiki Pacheco smartly makes the little corrections aboard Lil Z to keep him in all the way to eight. And he's gonna have his first score of the event in terms of this weekend. And Craig, I, I, I really like how you just said that. Little corrections, because JW, when things get going this fast, they've gotta be little precise corrections or they're gonna be too big. You're right, if, if any one big move right there, he's off in the well and gets hooked and and every, you know, that you, you hit it right on the head. It's little correct moves. When they're fast and flat like that, you can't make big moves. Well, you mentioned hitting. I tell you what, J-Dub, because there are some issues with Kaiki's pelvis at the moment. When the bulls go to the right, he says he doesn't have any pain. It's when they go away from his hand to the left that they cause pain, but that landing, he visited right, right away with sports medicine. He could tell that something was up. This is 2004 PBR world champ Mike Lee. And he faces Calliope King. Me and JW both watched some video on this bull. Really nice bull around to the right. Going to be away from Lee's hand. He can't just set straight up and down. He's going to have to move with this bull. Number 515. Only one man better in the history of the PBR, and it's been rides like that, Mac, that have been Mike Lee's bread and butter his, his entire career. Absolutely, man. Really nice bull, and he doesn't mess him up. You know, that, that that's the biggest thing when you get on a bull like that is just don't mess it up because he's going to do all the work for you, and he's going to give you a nice score. That was a, just a really solid job by Mike Lee. There were only 12 qualified rides in round number one, so somebody or a few guys are going to get back on one score. That 84 and a quarter might not seem like much, but Mike Lee with it is still in 11th, fifth in the round, but 11th overall in the event. So we've got a chance to see him again by the end of the evening. 
We welcome in Australian Sonny Shafirius, his first ever Built Ford Tough Series event, the 27-year-old who spent a lot of time rodeoing in Australia. Very excited for this opportunity. Hey, hey, hey. Not able to hustle enough, though, aboard Hustle Man. Yeah, and when we watch this back here, this bull sticks him. He gets around the corner pretty good, it looked like. I like that, man. He's got his chin tucked. Gets around the corner, all right? His feet are wanting to bounce on him a little bit. A little to the inside, has to look to the out, and then just keeps looking to the out. Goes too far. JW and I talk about this all the time. The hardest move in bull riding to make is to get in too far and then have to come out. Well, I asked him, uh, I haven't even shared this with you yet, but I asked him in the locker room when I first met him, who were your idols growing up? He said, well, Justin McBride, Jim Sharp, and Troy Dunn. I said, what'd you like about Justin McBride? He goes, nobody rode with better control. So there you go. Yeah, checks in the mail, Sonny. <laughs> Alex Cardozo gets a chance now against Night Gallery. Night Gallery, look for him to be around to the left. Cardozo's got a shot here. This is a new bull, he had some success at the minor league levels. He's been really good there. Cody Lambert brought him up. Gonna try him out, now we'll see how he handles the big show. Well, speaking of big show, we have not seen, you know, that's the bull you're talking about, but for Alex Cardozo, he had spent some time at the big show, Leah, but then remember he had that horrible broken neck at the finals a couple seasons ago. And, and then you mentioned injuries. If you take a look at his hands right now, he's got both hands taped. His righting hand, he broke a couple of years ago, all the metacarpals. He's also got his left hand, his free arm taped, and that's because he hyperflexed his thumb, and he says he needs to tape that so that he can pull his bull rope and get it tight to get himself set to the right. Look at Ruben. That's Ruben's Barbosa. Look at him. It's not hard His to ever find which guy. No, Ruben. Just look for the bicep. Look for the bicep, man. <laughs> Helping Alex pull and get that rope into proper position. But I think we've got some time. Go back to what I tried to get you to talk about earlier about how you sat or actually did not sit on a bull when you were in the shoot. Yeah, yeah I would sit on him while I was getting my wrap taken. And I always like to get my wrap taken, no matter if the bull was squatting, leaning, looking the wrong way, whatever. I like to get my wrap taken. That way, when I slid up, to get him right, as soon as he gave you the shot, you were good to go. But once I started to slide up, I like to leave my feet on the slats, the sides of the mushroom sheets, and keep my weight off of the ball, keep my weight on my legs. On the clock, 25 seconds to nod. He's gonna come down. A simple fake. And then the turn to the right, Night Gallery doesn't need much to get Cardozo off, and he goes 0 for 2 for the weekend. Now, and let's take a look at why he doesn't need much. Right here at this look to the left, he goes all that direction. As this bull starts back, look how straight everything is. He's stiff and behind everything. You're going to catch all of the bull's whip and power. Cardozo will not add his name to the list here in round number two. We have seen five scores already. Rubens Barbosa, your bad boy mower lead dog, and his standard for the moment, 87 and a quarter. Guess what? The PBR experience is coming to Walmart stores in coordination with the Built Ford Tough Schedule. You can go to PBR.com slash Walmart for more information. You'll get a chance to meet PBR riders, get up close with some of the PBR's bulls, win PBR event tickets and prizes, plus a lot of other fun stuff. Rubens Barbosa, your bad boy more lead dog at the moment. Cooper Davis, however, our defending PBR world champ, is prepping aboard Cheese Bandit. J-Dub, what do you think of this pairing? Well, I didn't know the bull, but I talked to Chad Berger. He showed me some video of him. He's bought this bull about six, eight months ago, and he just went and got him just a few weeks ago to get him ready for here. The video i seen, a lot like the bull Rubens Barbosa had right here to the right and really got it on. I know Ruben made a good ride, but this might be my pick for the go-around win. Well, it's good that Berger showed you that video, and if it is, like you said, to the right, Cooper Davis, already around Wintermack. Let's take you back 24 hours ago to where he absolutely went crazy aboard Berserk. Yeah, and here we're seeing him do it the other way, away from his hand to the left. I'm with JW, if the bull has a great day, the way Davis is riding this weekend, he's more than capable of going back to back on go round wins. Cooper Davis just has a little bit of that easy swagger to him this weekend. You can just tell well, he feels like he's in the groove. He gets a chance to prove it. Able to make an 
early correction, and with some help from Cheese Bandit, they keep going to the right, and it will be a second score for the defending PBR world champion. I can remember last season when Cooper Davis started catching on fire, talking about an inner confidence. Well, this was a confident ride right here. He waited when he had to, then when he needed to make a move, he would make it a very precise and crisp move. Great job here on the get off too. Waits, waits, picks himself back up, lets the bullfighters get in there. Great job by everybody involved with that ride. Frank, Jesse, Shorty all there to pick. Collapse the triangle, Cooper Davis. It's 82 and three quarters, but most importantly, it's a quarter point enough to move him into first overall. We get a check in now with three-time world finals champion Robson Palermo, who on a telecast, it seems like we're highlighting a lot of injuries. Few guys have been as injured over the dozen seasons he's competed as Robson. The latest that he's coming back from is that knee injury that he suffered at the World Finals. Yeah, J.W. Hart, I don't know. Have you ever known anybody that's had to battle back and tried to battle back as hard as Robson Palermo from injuries? I, yeah, I have not, and I'm gonna Watch go out on them. It, it just boils back down to the love of the game. You don't go through the things that he's been through and keep fighting at this level if you don't truly down inside your gut love it. And you see the smile on his face this week. He's happy to be here. He's doing what he loves. And you gotta admire that, Justin. Absolutely, man. And that's the thing. JW talks about the love of the game because nobody works any harder to be here than Polaro. I mean, this guy has spent the last five years just getting after it, trying to be able to compete. He's facing bar down right now, and Shorty, if you have time, well, he's on the clock. So let's let's see him and wait for the nod. It's down to 25 seconds. This would be a first score on the weekend for Robson. It would be pretty good here. Might have touched him already. Wow! Bar down sends. Palermo way up in the air. It's good to see him, but you know, again, we saw him in Anaheim go 0 for 2. Here, he goes 0 for 2. Weekend done. I mean, it's great to have him back, but this this is shades of his former self. Yeah, and you talk about all the injuries. Well, one kind of feeds the other. There's a breakdown in the mechanics also, and that leads to more injuries, and the injuries kind of make that happen. They, they kind of go hand in hand and you hate to see it. This guy's been a great bull rider for a long time. Well, and look, you've made the decision. Clearly, JW made the decision. Every athlete has to make the decision. But to his point of Palermo's love of the game, at some point, the intelligence of knowing when to stop has to outweigh love of the game. Well, it never comes back. With age, it, it doesn't, it's not like it's ever coming back to you. You're chasing something that's going to get out of reach at some point. Marco Gucci, number three in the world coming into the weekend, actually a former winner here in Kansas City. Let's take you back to 2013. Yeah, and speaking of injuries, this is a guy that's gotten healed up. This is what he's capable of, man. This guy can really ride when he's healthy. This year, we're getting to see a healthier Gucci. Well, and, and look, not to make age the ultimate deciding factor, Palermo 33, Marco 27. <laughs> Everyone knows you heal a little different in your, in your 20s. Yeah, there's a reason a lot of the top guys look at Cooper Davis. He's right now 22, 23 years old. He's the reigning world champion. Lockwood, Cole Baba, all these young guys. There's a reason the young guys dominate in this sport. When it's a sport we're talking about when 30 is ancient. Well, in JW, you always talk about the regular calendar and bull riding years. And you know, these guys age a little a little older. Oh yeah. It's almost like cat years. You can seven to one after you get to this level. <laughs> Marco faces evil intentions here with a chance for his first score of the weekend. I like a Gucci on pretty much any long round matchup right now. This guy's riding that good. I think this one should be into his hand. Doesn't matter for a Gucci though. Help, 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 help. I'm just, you know, going to use the phrase that you guys have used a couple times already. I'm going to go on a limb and say, evil intentions, not so evil. <laughs> not for, not for a Gucci, man. <laughs> He's going to get a re-ride opportunity. Yeah, big old kind of just a slow plug right here. Starts out all right, but once a Gucci gets him picked up, he's just got no chance. Starts getting really slow on him. Judges say, hey, Bull didn't get this guy a shot to win it all. We'll give him another shot. 
if he wants to take it. Uh, it's a 73 and a half, and he doesn't have a score yet, so you would figure he needs to take it because that's not going to put him in the top 15. Actually, I take that back. It puts him in 15th if he keeps the score. And Marco does not look like he's feeling very good at the moment. You mentioned coming back from the injuries. It's always been, or at least predominantly been, that right elbow, his riding elbow. You can see the big brace. He jokingly tells all of us, doesn't he, that he doesn't go anywhere without that brace. No, and it's something that he needs. You can just see him shaking Cody Custer off right there, offering him the re-ride option. He said, no. That's the thing. These guys, it all, all depends on how they're feeling and how they're trying to manage their season. All right, well, hopefully he goes by Leah. Let's let Leah try to grab him if you can. Danny Mike is going to be checking in with Sports Medicine for a second, Craig. Marco, can I ask how you're feeling? Uh, I feel my groin last night on the first row. So I think a lot about to get on today. And I, and when the boat gives me a real ride, I, I feel again, you know. Maybe get a rest this, this, this week and, and be ready for the next boat. Craig. Well, look, you know, that's been his philosophy all season long. We've shared it on multiple telecasts. One of the reasons he's placed third in the world is he's been smart about when he's ridden. He took a weekend off because he had the flu earlier this year. So this is Robson Aragel, affectionately known as Spider-Man, one of our Marvel heroes. He gets a chance now against Sudden Impact. Sudden Impact wandering around in the shoot, but nothing really bad here. He's got a good shot. Yeah. Sudden impact chooses to make multiple contact with the Brazilian. Spider-Man's got to work on his getaway, man. Shorty and the guys can only help him for so long here. See this bull, not a lot of kick. Big time front end, rearing around, drops him to the inside of the spin. But check this out. The guy's got the bull's attention. Get up, Spider-Man. What's going on? I was always way more Maybe he was just trying that. to spin that mental web of deception to lure the bull away on his own. Meanwhile, even though he's bucked off, he's still 12th overall, 82 and three quarters. No one better in the round than your bad boy more lead dog, Rubens Barbosa, but no one better in the vent than Cooper Davis. and return to AT&T Stadium February 18th and 19th. You can save up to 50 bucks on weekend tickets at Ticketmaster.com. And for more information, go to PBR.com. Seven rides in the round. Two men are still perfect. Cooper Davis and new contender, Claudio Montagna Jr., the Brazilian in his first ever Built Ford Tough Series event. Most of the top 10, however, still to ride, still a chance to add to their totals. Heike Pacheco has inserted himself in that 10th position with a ride in this round, and it's Marco Gucci who declined a re-ride and sits in the bubble position. Now Eduardo Aparecido after finished second in round number one. That was aboard switch hitter, Mac. He's going to try to add to his total, but let's go back 24 hours. Yeah, and this looked really good. He was tipped a little into his hand as this bull turned back. He picked him up and finished him off perfectly. Eduardo's got a good event going. Well, he has not been as steady, if you can call it that, this season as we would have expected. A little bit like Pacheco. He still, though, has had two top 10 results. This is a guy who won the Sacramento 15-15 bucking battle with that great ride on Jack Shot. Surprisingly bucked off that same bowl earlier today on CBS. But you say it all the time, man. Every time this guy rides, he's got a chance at the round. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I think that's been the, the case his entire career to this point, is he hasn't been able to find that consistency, because I get really high on this guy. I think he's got a legitimate shot to be the world champion, but then he doesn't take advantage of big moments that he needs to and let some things get away. He's got a chance, a really good chance against Swashbuckler here. Look for more of the same as what we just watched in that highlight of him. Bull should be away from his hand. I look for him to get another score here and get a good hit in the championship round. 
if you can get it in before he nods, go back to your point, and why don't you think he's able to capitalize and, and have that consistency with those big moments? I think it's a matter of focus for this guy, because the only time you see him get bumped off is when his head gets snapped up and, and he loses sight of the ball. When he can keep his focus on the ball, this guy's awesome. away from his hand, but he's going to catch up. And as you said it, that ride is a perfect example. At least a few opportunities where he could have looked up and turned his head away. Instead, he fought to bring his head back down to the middle of that bowl. Five seconds worth of opportunity to, to pick his head up because he's way out of time with this bull. Things aren't going right. This is the difference in what you see right now in a qualified ride and what you've seen earlier from him today on CBS in the 15-15 where Jack shot snapped him one time and he picked his head up and gave up on the ride. He refused to buck off. 85.5, that's fourth for the round, but most importantly, a pair of Sidhu has moved to the lead here in Kansas City. Cody Rodeo Tyler gets a chance for a Missouri boat ride. Very quickly that ends. He had 81 and three quarters in the bank, but the 21 year old getting a chance for the first time ever at the Bill Ford Tough Series. It not able to convert. No, it just gets beat off the line right here. You see, he's set down. As soon as this bull turns back, all the weight's back on his butt. That first jump is key, man. That sets up everything. You have got to leave with the bull. You can't leave ahead of him, and you damn sure can't leave behind him. And, and that's certainly what we didn't see the riders do in the bucking battle earlier today. It seemed like the problem was leaving the shoots for those guys. Yeah, and I mean, that. That's a big time problem. It's one that can't be fixed, especially against good bulls. If they beat you out of the chute, it's over. Denner Barbosa, as we're highlighting, clearly in the lead at the moment in the 2017 Rookie of the Year race. And many people who have watched this young man ride in Brazil think he has a future world championship. He faces evil ways. Well, for me, he's got a long ways to get to that world championship. JW, I see a lot of talent in this guy. But he's got to commit a lot like I was talking about with Eduardo. You got to be all in when that gate opens. Yeah, you, you can't be reaching down. Watching. And much like Eduardo Aparecido, even though this bull went into Barbosa's hand, you could see him after those first couple jumps, Mac, fight to bring his head back down. Yeah, and this is what I'm talking about. The guy's got a lot of talent. You can see it. He's got a bad shoulder. You can see the brace on his free arm. And But here's the difference. He keeps his head down. JW said you can't double grab. And because we've seen this guy get in a little bit of trouble, a little to the outside, and grab the tail of his rope and go ahead and get off the bull. Not today. He was committed to riding this bull. 83 and three quarters will actually move him into the top 15, 12 to be precise, and that will knock Marco Aguche out of the championship round for the moment. This is Brady Sims against Classic Wappen. He gets a chance against a bull that's been ridden five out of 18 times on his career. Brady was excited when I talked to him earlier. He told me this bull hop and skip and be around to the left. Thought he should really fit him. There's Lebanon Levi that bucked off Brady in round one. A classic ride from hey, Baby hey. Sims aboard Classic Wapping. That had everything. That had, that had snappy adjustments. That had bend at the waist. I mean, that's what she, that's what he should be doing. Hey, man, he wasn't he wasn't kidding me when he told me he thought this bull was really going to fit him. This was a good ride. Gets around the corners good, and you can, that's what I like about a good long round bull like this. He keeps trying the whole time, and it's up to the guy to bow up and finish him off. Sims did it right there, man. Good job. 86 points. The judges liked what they saw, and that's good enough to for second in the round. He's with Leah. Brady, how many of these Missouri fans was that ride for? Everyone I'm here. I just knew after yesterday, we'll come back and do our job. It'll all work itself out. Great, Craig. Leah mentioning Missouri, of course, because Brady Sims is from Holt. This is Cody Ford. And the Kraken. Cody, let's go. Keep going, keep going. 
Okay, Max, you, I don't know if you want to do it. Well, he's going to get a rewrite opportunity, but Cody Ford, I think, broke one of your cardinal rules and one of the cardinal sins, which is once that gate swings open, what are you hanging on to it for? Yeah. <laughs> You can see here, though, this bull's jumping and kicking. He's going to hold that leg over a little quicker. He stays pretty square with the bull. And this is too bad that the bull gets a bad start like this because this is the bull to crack. And we've seen him win go arounds. Gage Gay just won around a couple of weeks ago on this bull. A really good bull. Now he's going to have to take his chances with the re ride, which should be a good one. Well, you mentioned Gage Gay. Yeah, he was 89 points aboard the Kraken that weekend in Sacramento. And then Mike Lee got on board the Kraken and did 86 in a quarter as well. At your leaderboard here in Kansas City, our partner J.W. Hart, well, he owns a pretty good bull. Anywhere, anytime is Rodeo Time's motto. He's ready to teach one cowboy a lesson in the championship round. The professional bull riders built for tough world arena in Las Vegas, November 1st through November 5th. Five-day packages are now on sale, and you can call PBR Customer Service at 800-732-1727 to lock in your seats today. Another look at our scrolling BMW Trailer Hitches leaderboard, which selectively throughout the broadcast, you'll be able to see exactly where the riders are, not just in the world standings, but in the event standings. And we take a look at Silvano Alves getting ready aboard Strongheart. And Shorty, this is a chance for Silvano to continue another good weekend and another really solid start to the season. Absolutely, Craig, and I was giving him a hard time yesterday after round one uh, when he got off his bulls. I told him, I said, man, that was way too easy for you. And he just laughed. He said, good, that's how I like it. And he's not kidding when he, when he says that. But so Silvano does a great job of making every bull, when he's on his game, he makes every bull look easy. And that's, that's key. Now, it can bite you in the rear end if it goes too far because it is a judge sport, so you want that bull to look difficult. But your job is to be, get up there and make the bull look as easy as you can because that means you're not making any mistakes. Making mistakes at this level different from any other level, it does not work, but you are going to get out of position, so you got to be comfortable with that. Silvano is on a, on a great roll this year. Uh, I'd like to see him push himself just a little bit harder because I think this guy has got all the talent in the world, Craig. Well, and off of Shorty's point, of course, Mac, right, it bears mentioning again Silvano Alves, three-time PBR world champion, the first ever guy to win back-to-back -back world titles in 2011 and 2012. A guy that last season, you know, seemed to lose his way a little bit. We talked, of course, about the hip injury, how at times that has seemed to affect him. Lately, at times, it seems he just has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, and he might not be riding for the love of the game as much as some other guys. Yeah, and, and you can tell he usually all sets up and starts with how he By goes the in the shoot. You know, Alves. if he's able to get his business taken care of, slide up, nod his head, get out of the shoot good, he usually makes a good ride. Now, if you see him get the bickering back and forth with the shoot judge and getting the bull and messing with him and runs it down to one, two seconds left on the shoot clock, usually things don't go too well. Alves ridden five of his last eight, including round number one, 85 and a quarter. And now he's on the clock, which we do see a lot over the past couple of seasons with Silvano. He usually lets it run down basically as long as he can, which he didn't do, by the way, last night in round number one. He nodded quickly. He nodded quickly, and here's the thing. The bull had a good day. He made a good ride. And you said in here a long time on these bulls, sometimes they won't have their best day. is able to strong right, arm, Frankie. strong heart. And that's a second score for the weekend. And Silvano Alves continues to be impressive, Mac, at least in the fact that he is the only rider this season to make every championship round. That is an impressive stat right there, man. Every championship round so far. And I thought he did a really good job handling this bull. Wanted to stick him into his hand a little bit. He moved back to the front. And then when the bull turns back the other way into his hand, you can just go ahead and chalk that up to a qualified ride. He's not going to get Silvano going that direction. Alves is 83 and three quarters. Ties him with Mason Lowe in terms of their two bull total. So we now have five men who have stayed perfect 
here in Kansas City as we move on to J.W. Harris, the four-time PRCA world down, champion. It's come down to one ride for him, really. He needs Cowboys. about 100 points right today, which either Illinois, is going to come in the Texas, form of a round win or if he makes Harris, it in the championship round, perhaps some bonus points. But he is out of injury exemptions. So He's going to have to go back down to the to minor leagues if he can, cannot get something going now, against Grave Bear. Yeah, he's got to find it, man. And, and this is one that's going to be a good gauge to tell him whether he ne it needs to go back down to the minor leagues because this is the kind of bull J.W. Harris has to be able to ride at this level. Of the season last year. Talk so about different behind. motivation for, for men at different times in their, in their career. J.W. Harris a couple years ago said he came he to the PBR to win the world championship. Round. Let's go. Gonna do it. <laughs> and he takes get, a guys. slamming from Grave Digger. And over the past two years, Mac, this is unfortunately the image we have seen more often than not of J.W. He is just been hurt multiple times over. Every time he comes back for an injury, it seems like it's only a couple rounds before he gets injured again. Yeah, and this guy is so tough and he tries so hard. And JW, it, it's like he's just so tight right now. He's just trying to hold on to him. Not a lot of movement out of Harris, which he's been, that's what part of what's made him so great throughout his career. Well, I just hope guys, that this is not the last image we have of J.W. Harris. This guy is too tough and too good a bull rider for this to be the way he walks out of the Built Ford Tough Series. But we will update you on his condition if we can before we go off air tonight. But J.W. Harris hopefully will be back, although it might not be for a while at this level. This is Luis Blanco, who oddly enough was in a similar situation last weekend to J.W. He needed to ride, and he came through in a big way. He earned all the points he needed to, and now sits 20th in the world stand. Yeah, and that was a big ride last week for him, a really good ride into his hand. I'll tell you, this guy's got some ability, Craig. His one Achilles heel is he'll want to bring his free arm on bulls that spin to the left, which I think this one will. He'll want to get his free arm a little bit in front of him, and that turns his shoulders, and when you turn your shoulders, it's gonna turn your hips also. They're gonna follow, and that's gonna get you to the outside of the bull. Is that a hard habit to break, or is it back to one of the words you like to use, the patience factor? Does he just need to think through it a little bit? Well, it, it all boils down for Luis. It, his free arm shoulder on a bull that goes to the left, his free arm shoulder has gotta get higher than his right arm shoulder. A lot of times, he lets him stay level and just comes across his face. Tried to keep it level. Well, that's the other direction. <laughs> yeah. They need to stay level that way, but you got to go up and over the top of your rope. You can't set down under it. Well, the end result, unfortunately, for Blanco is after having a very successful weekend in Anaheim, for all intents and purposes, it looks like he will go over two here. Yeah, and a wild little bull. Wild start around there. Looks like the Judges are giving him a re-ride option. That's a good thing for him. Well, absolutely, and you can bet Blanco's gonna take it. And he nods. And absolutely lets Cody Custer know that he will be back again. Which allows us to transition, though, to another Australian in our midst, Cody Heffernan, with a chance against Dirty Vegas. I asked him what he knew about this bull earlier. He goes, I think it's supposed to spin. I like his style, man. <laughs> and, and really, you know, a guy always wants to have some kind of idea which bull is yours, obviously, and maybe some kind of track record on him. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because once that shoot gate opens, nobody has any control over that bull. And it's, you know, he might feel the dirt give a little one way, and that changes him from doing something that you've seen him do 20 times previous. Hey, j Dub, follow up on that because, right, as, as our stock contractor on the crew, talk about what when a bull feels something a little different they usually do. Well, sometimes you can... Heffernan, yeah. Heffernan off, so J.W., yeah, if you can't answer that question. Well, the bulls, when they feel a guy, the bulls get some experience under their belt, and they, and they feel a guy leaning one way. You can't be setting traps for these bulls. If a bull, you know, has been to the right every time all his life, and you lay over there, if they've got some experience about them, they'll go back the other way. They, These, these bulls feel a fly, you know, land on their back, and they can swat it with their tail. They know everything about their body, and... Uh, they're athletes, and they learn. They, they learn to play the game. 
Cody Heffernan, unfortunately, got outplayed right there. He's done here in Missouri. Meanwhile, Ryan Dirtier, he's been put through the ringer this weekend so far. Multiple injuries, and but he's here. He's not one of the guys on that laundry list of men that weren't able to answer the bell in this round. He faces DJD Nail. But Dirtier outwitted on that attempt as well with his one qualified ride in round one. He does still have a chance to come back. He sits 10th with 85 and a half, but Mac, take us through this ride first before we get to those injuries. Oh man, he had the draw on him right here. This is a really cool bull and you can see it. Tip him into his hand and then you talk about the injuries. I guarantee you, as sore and banged up as Dirt Eater is, when he felt his momentum and his head snap up, he gave up right then. Well, he faced two different bulls in the 15-15 bucking battle. It was his re-ride little red jacket that at the end really gave him a kick in the head. Right side of us, you can see it right there, just that glancing blow. He, he pointed out to me uh, and a couple other people his jaw earlier in the hallway. It is swollen beyond belief. Man, this guy, tough, tough guy right there. He has been banged up this week. Well, we may see him again. Meanwhile, we know we'll see Rubens Barbosa. He is still the bad boy more lead dog of round number two with the points and the money almost his. Coming up, Joao Ricardo Vieira. Joao Ricardo Vieira absolutely owns Cooper Tires Semper Fi. Now three for four against this specific bovine athlete. Vieira had an answer for it all. Yeah, great job there. Joao is on a mission also for a world championship. As the PBR rides on from Kansas City. Doug Gottlieb has an opinion on everything happening from around the sports world, and he isn't afraid to let you know how he feels. The Doug Gottlieb Show, weekdays at 3 Eastern, only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. We are in the midst of filling out our top 15. Five men are a perfect two for two. There they are, none better than Eduardo Aparecido at the moment, just ahead of defending PBR world champion Cooper Davis. Shane Proctor will still have a say in where he ends up in the pecking order. But 15 will make it in to our built Ford Tough championship round. We get ready. There he is, Rubens Barbosa. He's your round one leader, the bad, or excuse me, your bad boy more lead dog of round number two, looking at his good friend, Joao Ricardo Vieta, who now is trying to add to his total. He declined to re-ride in round number one, Mac. Here he faces rebound. Well, he's put himself in a situation where he's got to get a ride right here. No, I always think the odds go in his favor when the bull spins to the left, but he's gotten a lot better and he continues to work on bulls that go to the right. He sits at 75 points, that's in 16th position. That is not good enough as you hinted at. Just like that, whether you call it a strategy, a theory, or just a bad decision, Declining the re-ride in round number one does not pay off for the Brazilian. No, and that's why, depending on your health, if you're able, that's why I always think you try and better your score, kind of give yourself a little bit of room, because now he's on the outside of it. Disappointment, clearly evident on the face of Joao Ricardo Vieira, a man who, much like a few of the other guys we've mentioned, thought would have a better start to 2017. Just so far for him, not meant to be. Another man who declined his rewrite option in round one, kept 68 and three quarters points in the bank. That's Reese Case. Here he faces Wiper Blade. Wiper Blade needs to go back to the auto shop and get reset because there was not much back and forth from the bull. No, and. We already talked about him turning down a re-ride. He's going to get a re-ride option on this bull, too, because Wiper Blade just takes off. One big jump out of here. He's got, worst part about Wiper Blades, he's got big, scary-looking horns, but that's about as bad as he gets, because now he just cuts out jumping and kicking. You can see only 61 points coming in. Reese is going to be really low, but he's got two down. Well, and, and you have to wonder, the reason he gave us last night for declining the re-ride was 
the riding arm injury. So it doesn't look like he has any intention of no, accepting his rewrite. You here. can see him favoring it again. And that's a tough thing if you're too hurt to get on and, and get a better score. It's tough for me to think. How are you going to get by in the championship which, round? Which, because they're all going to be really the tough teams. Night, well, and right without calling out anyone else's strategy, so you and I both know, as does J.W. Lee and anyone else who watches these shows, some people come here to win, some people come here to play. Yeah, and I don't think that's Reese's strategy. I think the injury's kicking in there. Yeah. And it's keeping him from getting on multiple goals. Cole Livingston. Here we go, Cole Livingston. <laughs> the clock stops at three seconds. The re-ride flags fly because Undertaker underperformed. Hey, I like his style, though. He rode him back up and finished out the ride. See, a lot like Dinner Barbosa, this guy's got the brace on his free arm also. Bull just loses his feet, goes down. JW, I like to see that, though, when a guy rides him up and goes ahead and finishes. At least he's going to have a, a qualified ride. Yeah, you don't ever get off. Even when they foul you or whatever, I like to see a guy go ahead and try to make that whistle. Then leave that decision in the judges' hands. Don't try to put it in your own hands because you don't know what those judges saw. Well, Cole Livingston has accepted the rewrite option, and he has been given set him up Joe. We will see him again. Your bad boy more lead dog in round two. Rubens Barbosa, your leader of the event, fellow Brazilian, Eduardo Aparecido. Still to come, fan favorite, J.B. Mooney. Well, here's the original gunslinger. We'll have the final say in Sacramento. Back after an injury break. It is going to be close. Brutus with not the best out of his career, but so much power and so much beef. As the PBR rides on from Kansas City. Here's this week's athlete profile brought to you by Cooper Tires. Shane Proctor puts his stamp on Arlington, Texas. He is the 2016 Iron Cowboy Champion. Looking back in 2016, last year was a, uh, I mean, it, it, I had my ups and downs. I mean, there was, there was no doubt about it. I either was really hot or I was really cold. I bucked off, uh, I went straight from winning Iron Cowboy to bucking off 22 bulls in a row. There's just no excuse for that. But uh, for me, that's just, it is what it is. I mean, I can't change it now and I can only make 2017 better. I don't uh, look backwards, I look forward. Shane Proctor, your winner. Proctor handles it. That's your Cooper Tires athlete profile, and that is not an act from Shane Proctor. That is his attitude, and as he clearly stated, at times it serves him well, at other times it leaves him scratching his head. He is currently in eighth overall, but he will get a chance to move up in that pecking order. Robson Arajal, meanwhile, Spider-Man sits in the bubble position, 82 and three quarters. You know, Shane has talked a lot, Leah, about what he does right and sometimes what he does wrong, but he has a distinctive plan right now and how he thinks he can get better. And it all boils down to food, literally. F food is his fuel at the moment. He's already lost eight pounds since the second week of January, and he's been carrying around a backpack where he pre-prepares his meals. It has different slots so that he can continue getting the fuel he needs throughout the day. He's well, fine Jesus found Shane Proctor's lightness to his liking. He's able to toss him in the air with ease, and Proctor has to literally crawl off the dirt. And I hope Shane's all right, but JW, I got to come down to you. That was a really good little bull. How impressed was you with his out? I, I, I thought that was a really good day. That bull's been cheering. Well, he's a four-year-old last year. We used him in the classics. The Ogden family in Arkansas is partners on that bull. And uh, he's really matured as a five-year-old. We didn't win a whole lot with him as a four-year-old. Some of them mature a little bit later, and he's one of them. He's gotten really good this year, so proud to have him. Shane Proctor hoping that he just has the wind knocked out of him and he's able to make it back for the championship round. Meanwhile, this is Cody Ford aboard his re-ride option bull, Little Big Tex. Whoa, Little Big Tex, J-Dub. Getting a little extra active. 
He's trying to call. I know JW. He's trying to get from the other delivery I know. over to this side, man. But Big Ted's a good shot of Nevada Burger right there. This guy's been around it for a long time. And him and his dad, his brother Chad, uh, been in the bull business a long time. Big Texas. Raring to go, you might say. Chad Berger right there. Good to see him back after a weekend where he was suffering from a little bit, bit of an illness. But Shorty, what do, you, what do you think Cody Ford's chances are versus this one? Well, I, I don't really know this bull. You know, and they, you see they got that rope over him. He's obviously trying to rear up in the shoot. And that, that's something, Craig, that, that uh, we got to remember day in and day out is that that bucket shoot's a dangerous place. We saw Chase Outlaw get jerked down and knocked out yesterday. But... Uh, out of a right-hand delivery, I'm going to assume this bull's going to go to the right. And the reason I'm going to assume that is when they, when these bulls buck or, or even lope, it's on a lead, right or left lead. So if they if they like to buck on the right lead, they're going to be turning in a right-hand circle. So it's more natural to have them out of a right-hand delivery so that they start out with that right foot forward. Assume he's going to go to right. That's away from Cody Ford's uh, right arm, uh, right hand. And uh, uh, I, th I think the Bulls going to win this one. Cody, he hadn't been in this game uh, for a long time here lately at the Built Ford Tough. He was on tour years ago, but it's been a while. When you come back to this level, you're, you're in the big leagues. Everything happens a lot faster than it does in the minor leagues. Great job once again. Not only was Shorty talking us through that, but then actually grabbed Cody Ford by the leg to pull him to safety. And you have to figure we're going to see re-ride flags yet again because little big Tex did not cooperate fully. No, 100% re-ride right here. He crashed around there, fell down. Shorty does a great job of getting a hold of Cody Ford, pulling him back the other way. It's a good thing everybody comes out of that unscathed because that could have been a bad wreck. Cody Ford's going to get to try it again. That is not normal shoot procedure. And little big Tex was telegraphing that he could do something like that with that activity prior to Cody Ford nodding, but back to Shorty's point, Mac, about how the speed at this level is a little differently. Cody was in one event in 2016. Besides that, wasn't on tour 2013, 2014, 2015. It is hard to get back, back up to speed. Yeah, this was a guy that come around as a, as a young guy and found some success early on and, and then just dropped out of sight. You know, and he's been trying to battle his way back and, he, and he's finally gotten back here. Uh, and it's time for Cody Ford to make the most of it. Well, this is Luis Blanco trying to make the most of his rewrite opportunity. He faces another bull from our friend JWR. This is the way I am. Yeah, this is a really good bull of JWs. Any bull rider at this level should want to get on this bull. Likes to the left, but in JW and I was talking about it earlier. He said he will switch it back up and go back to the right. Good draw right here for his rewrite. The clock says 7.67. The way I am brought the snap, and it looked like Luis Blanco had an answer, but he may have come up just a little short. Yeah, and you can see the way I am starts out really, really good, and then he starts widening out a little bit, getting a little longer, a little longer. Now he's going to switch it up and head back to the right. See, Blanco's off to the side here. We'll see if he grabs the fence there. See his hand on it where they stop the clock. You cannot use the fences in any way to help you get back on the bull. Now, though, to his defense, it's a little hard when you see that pike coming. You have to get your <laughs> right. hand up. Right. That's just called self-preservation. Well, he did have a helmet on, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, it's a little tough to, it's, to not get your hand up there and get it in front of your face. I'm going to state the obvious, though. For Luis Blanco, this could turn into a tough weekend. Remember, he challenged in round number one at 7.97. These challenges cost the riders $500 if they lose. He's challenged again. So if he loses this one, it will turn into a very costly weekend. Yeah. And no score. Yeah, we just got official word. Luis Blanco has donated $1,000 to tough the organization one, this weekend. And that's a tough one, as you said. After tying for fourth last weekend in Anaheim, the good news, though, and Luis always one of the smilier writers in the locker room is that he's he knows he's gonna have more opportunities in the coming weeks because he is wow. firmly ensconced in the All top right, 30. So this is Cole Livingston now with another right. chance. The 18-year-old Texan faces set him up Texas. Joe. Yeah this is a good boy. 
JW, I've been pretty impressed with this young guy. I think he's got a lot of ability, little strong guy, looks like a pretty aggressive rider. Yeah, I think some of the times the aggression in his style hurts him a little bit. Like he's up to the big time, he thinks everything's gonna happen faster, which he is, but he gets a little wound up if he's slowing down just a touch. You can tell the direction change, he seemed to be doing exactly what J-Dub was highlighting, Mac. He seemed to be placed, he seemed to be patient, and he was there centered. But then set him up, Joe, put in the setup move. Yeah, set him up, Joe. We talk about this being a good bull. Cole's making a really good ride into his hand. Here's where he's got to get better, and I think he will. Watch when this bull changes directions, how it snaps his head up. Right here, watch it come. Boom. He has got no side of that bull. He's counting the lights in here. Now this bull's changing. His head's gotta be down so that he can make the change with him. I think this is the guy that's gonna make that transition. Youngest rider on tour, 18 years of age. We make a lot, of course, about Jess Lockwood at 19 in the world number one position. Meanwhile, two-time PBR world champ J.B. Mooney has extended his evening a little bit with all these re-rides. He's the last rider, so he still has one more guy to watch, and it's another re-ride. It's Cody Ford on his third bull of the round, and he sits atop mental revenge. Mental revenge. Cody Ford, look for this bull to be away from his hand. J.W., what are you thinking about this matchup for Cody Ford? Well, a lot like uh, Shorty talked about, the speed's a little bit faster, and Cody's been on the lower trying to get back here for three years now, maybe four years. So he's got to make this one count. He won an event in Reno last week to get here, but he's got to step it up today. You're good. Mental revenge gives him a, a little something to think about. And I'm no lip reader, but our mics picked up a few choice words from Cody Ford after that buck off, and he was not happy. No, he's upset with himself, tries to cut the bull off around the corner. That's why I always try to talk to young guys about ride a bull like he's going straight. It's up and down, it's give and take. Don't worry so much about left and right. Cody Ford's quick buck off sets the table and the stage for two-time PBR world champion, our last rider here in round number two. And J-Dub, he gets to face one of the bulls that you're part of, Plumber Heart Cattle Company, Glory Days. How do you think this is gonna go? Well, I guess we're about to find out, ain't we? <laughs> I never bet against this guy. Uh, Cooper Davis has ridden this bull. Uh, Jess Lockwood rode him. They rode him at the PBR finals. Uh, we haven't bucked him since the finals. He went through some hawk soreness where his hawk swelled up on him. Uh, we did a lot of rehab to his hawk, so tonight's kind of a major voyage for him to see how he holds together. We think we've got him 100%. Uh, he looks sound and, and everything should be good. Should be a good matchup, match made in heaven for JB. Hey, J-Dub, I know you got to flank the bull, but if you can answer one more question, what was the biggest indicator for you? When do you know the bull is healthy enough to come back? Well, you just kind of watch their demeanor. You learn them. You learn these bulls' demeanor day in and day out, and, and watch how they eat if they if they're off their feet or just different things. JB needs a score if he wants to make it to the championship round. Oh boy! He like Blanco reached up to support himself because he, he figured he was going into the steal, and then Glory Days just kicked him. At the end, with one final message, and J.B. Mooney did not have a weekend that he had hoped for. Mooney's just out of his groove right now, man. He gets started really good with glory days, gets around the corner. That's such a good little bull, and he tips him right there, and look where his head is. It's looking right back at those shoots. Mooney has got to get this under control. This is the only thing that's ever held him back is when his focus gets off. The early season pelvis and hip injuries that he felt he had dealt with and dealt with accordingly. He had that great result coming back in Sacramento when he went four for four, but since then, it's been a tough task and a tall task indeed for JB to even get a qualified ride. Well, JB Mooney's out, but 15 men are definitely in and are still the story here in Kansas City. None better than Eduardo Aparecido. He is gonna have first pick in the draft, and the reason the line is going down to 16th is because Leah Garcia just got word that Reese Case is out 
because of a right bicep tear, which means Cody Rodeo Tyler in his first event ever is gonna make the championship round. Many people may not have heard the week. Oh, sorry guys, sorry man. Now I got my own brain spinning. Yeah. Many people may not have heard the news, but this week the legendary reindeer Dippin passed away. And Craig, this was a great bull. He was so athletic. Nobody ever knew what he was gonna do when the shoot gate opened. I tried my hand at him several times to no success. Not very many guys were successful on this bull. Well, there you are. This video shows just how wild and crazy Reindeer Dippin could get, but it wasn't just his career, it's actually his legacy as well that's really notable. Yeah, and I, I think that's what he's gonna be remembered for the most. Biggest thing on there, the three-time champ of the world, Bushwhacker. J-Dub, Shorty, this was a bull that had people on their edge of their seats every time he left the shoots. You know, Shorty uh, and Craig and, and Justin, Reindeer didn't just bring attention to PBR. It, it brought a worldly attention from a lot of media that we wasn't accustomed to getting media from, New York Times and a lot of the big newspapers. And I run into a lady in, in a hotel in New York City, and I just had a cowboy hat on, and she brought up, Hey, you, you're a cowboy. I, I know a bull, reindeer. So he, he was famous. He was, and he was exciting. Not only did he have the fans on the edge of their seat every time he was going to go, he had us on our toes because he was, when I think of that bull, uh, one, one of the reasons he's, he's one of my favorite bulls is because I think of him as spastic, and that's how he was. You didn't know what he was going to do. It was going to be fast, wild, and he was mean. Uh, I know the bull riders didn't like getting on him because of that, but they had respect for him, you know? Yeah, and I'll tell you what, I still got a nod on my bottom rib right here from him, so <laughs> I got a lot of remembrance from him, guys. A lasting impression. Well, certainly Cindy Rosser thought of Reindeer Dippin' as one of her family. It was a tough week, in fact, for the bull owners and stock contractors in general. Our thoughts also go out to Gilbert and Julie Carrillo because Carrillo Cartel passed away this week as well. Our world number one is not in the championship round, but six men out of the top 10, they are. If you go up to number 11, Silvano Alves, that means seven of the top 11 can dramatically change where they are in the world standings after this championship round. Eduardo Aparecido had the first pick. He chose Cooper Tires, Brown Sugar. Let's check in with Shorty for his Matador Jerky pick of the pen. Well, Craig, for the Matador Jerky pick of the pen, we're gonna go with this prehistoric looking sucker right here, owned by Caveman Bucking Bulls. How fitting is that? This is rodeo time. Also, our partner, J.W. Hart. I know he's really proud of this bull. I think the bull's gotten a little bit easier to ride here in the last couple months because he lost that little bit of hop and skip Usually going to look to the left, back to the right. He's got that intensity that J.W. Hart looks for in all of his bulls. This is a cool one. Uh, you don't see them every day that look like this anymore. Rodeo time. Matter of jerky, pick the pin. J.W., Shorty didn't just call you old. He called you prehistoric. That's why I took it. I read right between the lines. Hey. It's starting to turn gray, I can't say much. That's good, well we're looking forward to seeing Rodeo time, but we started off with the 21-year-old, Cody Rodeo Tyler, the Oklahoma Cowboy, in his first ever event back, makes his first ever championship round against TLW's Big Cat. He's got his hands full here, this is one of the toughest bulls to get by. Big Cat, let's go! Big Cat makes short work of the young man. He'll go one for three on the weekend. This will definitely get chalked up as a learning experience. I gotta tell you though, Big Cat has a pretty good day, but you can see how he got left a little bit behind. Now he's gonna be setting down and stretched out when Big Cat gets into the spin. That's a good day for that bull as far as a day to ride. He can usually have a lot more moves, be really strong. Judges were impressed, 44 and a half, and that's the range the scores are gonna expect to see. Definitely north of 
44, if not higher than 45. That's the championship round caliber bull score you need to look for. In terms of these overall titles, they're decided on points now. Remember, you get points for round wins as well as where you place overall in the event. It is your cumulative bull total, how many rides you get, of course, that place you in that pecking order. Robson Arajal hoping to get a second score out of three attempts. He chose the beat jack. This is one of my favorite bulls on tour just because all the guys know what he's going to do. The gate's going to open and he's going to spin to the right. And nobody never, ever has an answer for this bull boot jack. It looks pretty simple, but it's really tricky. If you get too far to the inside, he's going to widen out and leave you there. And if you try and ride his outside shoulder, well, he's going to get strong, step ahead, and swing you to the outside. Yeah, so many skill sets in his bag of tricks. Boot Jack ridden only one of his last 31 outs. In fact, nine of his last 12 buck off smack have come at either two and change seconds or under. Yeah, if I was a stock contractor, this is the bull I'd want to own right here. Because he always gets the job done. This one goes a little bit longer than usual, 3.45 seconds, but the end result is the same. Bootjack now only two qualified rides out of 36 attempts in his career. Yeah, and Robson knows I can't get too far to the inside or he's going to leave me there, so he's going to try and stay back and on his outside shoulder. <laughs> but this bull now, if you do that, he's just going to run you back and sling you down. That has been a great bull. Two up, two down for the Bovine Masters early on in our championship round here in Kansas City. Next up, it's Denner Barbosa, who came into the weekend 10th in the world standings, about 1,200 points behind Next Jess Sunday, Lockwood. An opportunity, as we've talked about, for all these guys chasing Jess Lockwood, who wasn't even right able now. to ride in round number Denver two today Barbosa. because of injury. Look he chose Lots. Super Stinger. Well, it's funny you bring up Jess Lockwood because with this bull, that's the only guy I've ever seen on him. He's been on him twice. One time he was 93 plus points on him. The other time it was a zero, and this bull was extremely ranked. That zero that you mentioned, that was round five at last year's World Finals. That out with Jess Lockwood and Super Stinger only lasted 2.7 seconds. And I don't think this bull's going to have a set pattern. He might turn back to the left, but he will switch it up. He's really, really strong. On the clock. Denner needs to nod in 20 seconds or else he'll be disqualified. We've already seen Luis Blanco DQ this weekend. Now close to 10 seconds. Marco Gusche is the one holding his vest. There's the nod. At the very end, Barbosa comes over the front end, but it's not until he's been able to calm Super Stinger down, and we'll have a qualified ride. And a good one at that. Super Stinger doesn't have the best day that I've ever seen him have, but Barbosa does his job really well. And I, I gotta say, man, been a lot of hype. I've read some articles and stuff about this guy, and if he can have this level of commitment every time that the gate opens, He's got a real shot to win a whole lot. Clearly from there, it looks like he's made the eight seconds. The judges score, scores, excuse me, trickling in. 85 points for Denner Barbosa. Going to give him that second of three scores, and it will move him up to sixth overall in the event. As we move on to 2004, PBR World Champion Mike Lee, the first man to ever not only win the overall world title, but also the world finals event title in the same year. With his pick in the draft, he has chosen losing my religion. Yeah, and JW, I think Mike Lee's got a shot here. This is a bull that's been around quite a little. What do you, what do you think Mike's chances are? Well, I... I always give Mike Lee a chance because this is a guy that has experience on his side. But this bull is old school bucking bull. He's going to be long in those jumps out across there. He can go a long ways. He can go up to four or five jumps before he spins. But when he does come around, he is going to make it count. Mike Lee has his hands full here. I give the advantage to the bull, Justin. We have seen this bull only once this season, gang, but he took care of Kaiko Pacheco handily in Oklahoma City a few weeks ago. 
And like JW is saying, even if this bull doesn't find a place to turn back, he's still going to be really break out across there. All it took was one big move, and Mike Lee ends up with his bottom on the dirt. <laughs> had a good day, man. Bull always bucks really hard, but he finds his spot right here close. JW, as a contractor, you can't ask one to do much more than that. 44 and a half, but I'd mark him even more. I thought that bull was good. Yeah, I thought that bull was a good half point better than that, but you know, that bull can go, uh, you know, three or four jumps like we talked, but he went right in the gate day. That was outstanding. One qualified ride, Brazilian Denner Barbosa has gotten it done. It's another Brazilian who's hoping to defend his championship here in Kansas City. Eduardo Aparecido was the winner last season. Can he go back to back? A lot of bulls with a lot of power still to come, including the one and only crossfire. We saw him take care of Shane Proctor in the Sacramento 15-15 bucking battle. A lot of round points already rewarded this weekend. It started in round one with Cooper Davis. Cooper Davis getting it done big time away from his hand. Champ's looking good. Earlier this evening, it was Rubens Barbosa who dominated round number two. Yeah, and on a weekend where the guy in front of him has not been able to get anything done, Barbosa capitalizes. Well, how about even a little earlier today in the 15-15 bucking battle, Taiki Pacheco. Pacheco, don't let this guy get in the groove because he will <laughs> take everybody's money. It all comes down to the eight seconds of effort. You have to stay on if you want to win anything. And our top rider is still to come. Well, it's going to be a chance for Eduardo Aparecido to win Kansas City back to back. It would be a first season win for Cooper Davis and a first career win for Claudio Montagna Jr. The last man to win his debut Built Ford Tough Series event was none other than Emilio Hacende, Springfield. 2013, but let's talk about Kaiki Pacheco and Shorty. I'm going to go back to you because this is your Matador jerky pick of the pen in action, rodeo time. Yeah, cool bull here. This is like I talked about his intensity. Watch this bull. He really kind of gets out there. He's going to look to the left, probably go to the right. He will go to the left, and uh, Kaiki, you know, you talk, talked about his hips bothering him. That could be an issue for him, but the one thing this bull does is he brings a lot of intensity. He's really cool to watch. Uh, yeah, I like to call it electricity. He bucks with a little electricity, uh, and uh, then he, he doesn't want to hook you, but I think he will if you're in the way. James Gretchen. Hey! Pacheco handled him to the right, but when he went to the left, like Shorty mentioned, it went all rodeo times way. And J Dub, let's check in with you. How pleased are you with that out? Well, you got to be pleased with the with the out of the bull. Kaiki really tried and bull started to the right just the way he wanted him. And we uh, kind of common knowledge around here about that bull that he will go back the other way. Looking at the video here, Kaiki just just missed getting back to that front when he jumped out it to go back the other direction. Is that the correction, Mac, that you saw as well that could have kept him in this a little longer? Well, yeah, it's the only thing that's going to keep you in it. On a bull like rodeo time, when they give it to you, you got to take it, Craig. And Kaiki is, is starting to have a trend on bulls that go to the left. You talked about his, uh, you know, having the injury that's bothering him right now, and bulls that go to the left, it's hurting him. He's got to get this fixed. Man. Well, his season riding percentage so far, well below what we've seen in his few first few years on tour. We get now a chance to check in once again with Ryan Gerdiger, who has an opportunity but it's an opportunity where he's going to have to be perfect against Crossfire. Yeah, I think Dirt's got a chance here, but he can't get too straight up and down because Crossfire, the thing that makes him strong is he's got just enough forward movement that if you don't need it at the, at the right time, it's going to put all the power on your hand and, and get your lean back, and, and he will finish it. Well, Ryan knows what he's up against. These two have met a few times before. He's never been able to complete and seal the deal. Far from eight seconds achieved on Crossfire in terms of Dirt Eater's experience. This bull ridden only three out of 34 times in his career. Just three weeks ago, he was sitting sixth. Here we go. He gets it. Ryan hey, Dirt Eater, hey, 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 hey. third time is the charm. 
And off of what you talked about with Kaiki and the problems he can have, Dirty or few are as good away from their hand, and he showed it right there. Well, a theme all week has been these guys getting beat out of the shoot. That's how you leave out of the shoot with the bull, and it sets everything up. Now he's in perfect timing with the bull. He handles him. I'm really proud for Dirt Eater, man. He's had a tough weekend, took some big time shots. This guy is sore, hurting. He sucks it up and gets the job done when it counts the most. 87 the quarter not only moves him to the lead in the round, but Ryan Dirt Eater is your new leader here in Kansas City. And the Cherokee kid has put pressure on everyone else, including the next guy, Stetson Lawrence, who with his pick chose Jailbreaker. Yeah, I talked to Stetson right before this championship this round started. He said, this bull, he likes the left, he said, but he will go back to the right. Stetson's riding good, man. This guy, he's got a lot of ability. Give him a good shot against this bull. Stetson Lawrence, as we're showing you, 86 points in round one. That was good enough for fourth. He got dispatched in round two by Clevenger. Jailbreaker has a pretty good stat line. This bull's bucking up both times. Can he ride it tonight? Stetson Lawrence loses his rope, gets popped in the face as he's leaving the back of Jailbreaker. And Jailbreaker now a perfect 3-0 against the North Dakota Cowboys. Yeah, but man, I like the effort that he puts out right here. You can see the Bulls got him beat going back the other way. Stetson tries to go for broke and get his upper body over there. We talk about the strength, though. When you try and cut him off on the backside, it's going to put all the pressure on your hand. That's a good effort from Lawrence, So, No eight seconds for Stetson Lawrence, but a moment ago, Ryan Dirtier got the job done. He's our new number one, and he's with Leah. He's the feel-good story right now. What adjustment did you have to make after the concussion coming back today? Uh, just that don't give up attitude, you know? We're the best bull riders in the world, and we know what it takes to be the best, and that's why I'm here. Great. Six career wins for Ryan Dirtier. None bigger than last year's World Finals event title. Trying to win his first time in 2017. His friend Brady Sims has got a chance to surpass him, though, against IROC. Yeah, now you're starting to get to the point of the draft where these guys got to go in there and really pick a bull that they feel confident about. This has been a good bull, quite a few outs on this bull. Brady Sims, man, he looked really good in round number two. He's bringing some confidence with him. Brady Sims handled the direction change, and it looked like Mac he was going to keep fighting for that middle, but Irock was able to crank up the speed a little too much. Yeah, Brady Sims starts this really, really good. I hope he goes back and watches this because he makes a good adjustment to get around the corner, but then he raises back up. You can't just do it once and then it gets easier from there. You've got to continue to do that. You've got to try and win every jump. The silver lining for Sims, he only made two championship rounds all last season. He has already made two in 2017. No one's better here in Kansas City so far than Ryan Dirtyder. His best of the season, third New York. He's trying to better that. Two qualified rides so far in our championship round in Kansas City. Ryan Dirtyger, the best in the round, as well as the best in the event so far. But, Mac, you said it before the break. We are now in the part of the batting order where these guys had great picks. Shane Proctor now gets a chance aboard Cooper's Comp. Yeah, Proctor, he likes to stay really straight up and down. I think if Proctor can break forward when this bull moves forward, he's going to have a real chance. But, J-Dub, what kind of chance do you think Cooper's Comet gives him? I think it gives him a good chance to go into the leaderboard here because this boy is, uh, was raised in Canada from the Vols, and he's going to be right here at the ride. I've seen video of, of him wiping Cooper Davis out of the Calgary Stampede, seen him at the PBR Finder. This is a really good one, Justin, right there in the right that's in the Proctor's hand. That's his direction. I mentioned Iron Cowboy, Shane Proctor, last year's oh, Iron Cowboy like champion. Leah talked earlier All about right, the new Shane dedication Proctor to diet, trying right. to lose a few pounds. So he says he feels lighter on the bull. But Cooper Davis's we'll example from a couple of seasons ago right, was a perfect Shane one to follow. Proctor, 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 You guys called it. You're good. 
Shane Proctor and Cooper's Comet have combined for eight seconds. And if it is enough, if it's more than 86 and three quarters, Proctor moves to the lead. Well, Shane Proctor is really hitting his stride. And <laughs> J-Dub, I'm with you now, man. He knew exactly what he was doing when he picked this bull. Really a cool bull into his hand. Proctor makes a flawless ride, makes a great get off, 89 and three quarters. That was well done. 89 and three quarters and Dub, don't let him get away with that. He says, I'm with you now. <laughs> I'm always with Jay Dub. <laughs> Shades with Leah. So many things you've done that have been calculated. For example, tell me about your equipment. Um, I switched to a Brazilian rope uh, in Sacramento. I was having trouble with my other one rolling over too much with my American. I've been going back and forth, and now I'm just sticking with the Brazilian straight forward. It feels good. It's working. No mystery why he's sticking with it, Craig. Well, I tell you what, it's been a while since we've seen a rider go back to back in terms of events. And Shane Proctor has a chance. Last weekend's winner in Anaheim now moves to the lead, clearly in front of Ryan Dernier, but still with the best riders of the weekend to come. This is Rubens Barbosa, number two in the world. He won that round a, a minute ago, or, you know, moments ago, Mac, that we talked about. If he can win this event, he could be our new world number one. And I'm on the Barbosa bandwagon. I like it. Because this guy He's riding really, really good. I talk about it on moves that spin to the right, how tough he is. And I like the fact that he's really working and trying to get better on moves that go to the left. He gets out of confidence. This guy's the whole package. He's got a real chance. So you're saying it was the bicep that brought you in, and now you're on the bandwagon. It all starts there. It all does start with this guy's strength. But what I like about him is he's not just relying on that. He's working on his fundamentals. It was 87 and a quarter earlier this evening on Shoot Boss that won him round number two. He's going to have to be, though, better than a few riders previously. Seven straight buck offs for Kukabura on the clock. I think he gets along with this bull kid. You heard the guys say, on the clock. This bull will get you. What's going to happen? The turn back gets Barbosa. Had it to the right, Mac, as you thought would happen, but then Kukabura said, I'm going to change it up a bit. Yeah, and, and when he does change it up, we'll see it back. He's going to go forward a jump or two. When that bull goes forward, you can't sit and wait for him to turn back. You've got to start going forward with him. You can see he's set down into his hand, and he's so strong he can get by with that. But now when that bull takes that jump forward, man, he's got to get up there and meet him and get ready for that direction change. Barbosa goes by the wayside. And he now gets to watch his compatriot and friend Silvano Alves, three-time PBR world champ, chose Wicked and chose him confidently. And I just want to remind you, my friend, only man this season to make every championship round. He has now been in all six so far this season. We talk about guys that you better be careful of. Silvano is one of them. So Silvano is gonna sneak up on people if they keep letting him have opportunities. Well, here's the thing. This is a real opportunity for him to convert in a championship round. He's been doing good making them, but hasn't been taking a lot of points out of them. This is a big chance to get some points out of this championship round. There's the nine. He gets the score. Hey, hey, hey. To your point, Mac, that's the first time this season he has converted in the championship round. All he needed to do was hang on. Now he moves a full bull ahead of everybody else. Yeah, and that's big right there. He's, he's made some nice rides all week long. And then championship round, I thought he picked a great bull here in Wicked. Wicked has a nice day with him, tries in both directions. Savano's riding really good because into his hands one thing, but you can see he's wanting to stick him right here. He just moves over, gets back in control. He's with Leah. Are you experiencing a renewed passion for the sport? Yeah, it's very transparent. Because uh, sometimes good in the world. Two years back is not good. But stay my life. Just continue myself and straight ride my boots. It's Mason Lowe. The Missouri man totally taken care of by Kunai's. And Mason Lowe, as you can see from the look on his face, never afraid to show his emotion. No, just gets beat out of the chute, lets that big, long free arm whip around. That bull finishes, good bull. 
Pumas. Let's tag up Alves, though. Silvano Alves is your new leader here in Kansas City. As he said to Leah, he's just going to keep on doing what he's doing, and he's confident it's going to pay off. He has ridden seven of his last ten, and he is your leader here in Missouri. He's on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ford F-Series. Visit PBR.com slash Ford for your chance to win a 2017 Ford F-150 and a trip to the PBR World Finals in Vegas. By Las Vegas, proud host of the 2017 PBR Built Ford Tough World Finals. And by Kubota Tractor Corporation, where passion meets performance. Kubota helps you achieve more. Three rides left in Kansas City. Our BMW Trailer Hitches leaderboard has none other than three-time PBR World Champ Silvano Alves leading everyone by a full bull score. His list of accolades is long. At the opposite end of the spectrum, just starting his career on the Built Ford Tough Series compatriot Claudio Montagna Jr. I mentioned the last man to win his debut event was Brazilian Emilio Hacende, Springfield 2013. And if this ride is 86 points or more on Jeff Daniels' after party, which is more than enough bull Mac for Claudio, he moves to the lead. Well, I've been really impressed with this guy so far this weekend. In both long rounds, I've seen him ride bull away from his hand and another bull into his hand, and he looked really, really good either direction. And JW, he's, he's got to know the rap sheet on this bull because after party's been around a long time and is in the same tracks every time. That's the thing about this bull. This, I, I quoted his age as 10 uh, a few weeks back, but I got corrected by the man that raised him, Jack Ratchin, out of Mansfield, Texas. This bull's actually 12 years old and, and still in the championship round. This is a special, special kind of athlete right here. That's that special two-year leeway, right? You just yeah. want to say he's 10, so he has that more energetic look to him. Yeah. <laughs> 80 career Boys, outs for Jack Daniels after party, been ridden 25 times. Kaiki Pacheco could not get it done in Sacramento a couple years ago on him, excuse me, a couple weeks ago. That went four seconds. It was Ryan Dirty at the finals last year, the last one to ride him, 87 points. Claudio. It's going to be close, though, for the 86 points. That is not Jack Daniels' after party's best out ever. So, really, it, it does fall into the judges' feet. I want to give Claudio a lot of credit, though, right here. Hop, skip into his hand. He's in perfect position. A lot of times, this bull wants to get guys down on his head right around the corner. But look at the way he handles this reverse, man. It's just perfect. He doesn't panic. He's in the right spot. That guy's got a bright future. Well, and it is not enough. 85 and a half points is gonna put him a quarter point behind Silvano Alves. So, no question, a great weekend, a debut weekend for Montagna Jr. We know we'll see him again in the coming weeks. We transition to our defending PBR world champ. Cooper Davis had a great pick. In fact, the second pick of this draft. With it, he chose Jailhouse Jr. Yeah, he's looking forward to this one. Said the bull should be round to the right. That's right into Davis's wheelhouse. The guy's riding good. We've seen him get the job done. Away from his hand, wins the first round on a bull. Then back into his hand earlier at this event. He's riding good, man, and here's the thing. Talk about that confidence Davis is getting it back and, and that desire. Winning is contagious. When you get a little taste of it, you want a little more of it. Because what's Won that round one ride that we've shown you multiple times. Shorty, is, I mean, you're so close to the action. Can you see it in the way that these guys prep what we're talking about in terms of that just swagger or that ease of ability when you're just in the zone? Not with Cooper Davis. With most guys, you can. You can you can really see it. A lot of it's to do with the, the shoot procedure, just how they're moving in there and how comfortable they are, how quickly things kind of come together for them. But Cooper Davis is a guy that really uh, his demeanor is so mellow before he gets on a bull. I don't know how he does it because I would be a lot more excited than he is. He just stays real calm and cool, and that's how he rides bull. He doesn't panic when he gets in a bind. Cooper Davis is going to move to the lead. He only needed 85 and three quarters, and Mac Jailhouse Jr. looks like he's given him more than enough. Yeah, I think he should be plenty of points to take the lead. But I have been really impressed with this guy all week. 
His moves, everything that he's done has been very precise and to the point. He holds when he needs to, he waits, he waits, then when he needs a big move, he makes it and he makes it right now. But the best thing about this ride is the finish. Right there, stuck into his hand, says, nope, let me move over here and finish this off. He started the show by telling Leah Garcia he holds himself accountable for his slow start. He is making up for it in spades in Missouri. 89 and a quarter. Cooper Davis, one rider left to find out whether he will win his fifth event of his career, the first of 2017. And this will go a long way to defending that gold buckle that he is trying to match Silvano Alves. But speaking of defending, Eduardo Aparecido gets the final say in whether or not he will defend this Kansas City title. He chose Cooper Tires Brown Sugar. If it's more than 87 and three quarters, he wins. Well, he picked the exact bull that he needs right here. We've already seen Rubens Barbosa win an event on this bull earlier. This. Was right around 90 points on him. Brown Sugar can still have really good days. Look to and the left, back around to the right. I think this was a no-brainer for him to pick this bull. It's all Cooper up to him right now. He's got every chance right here. Cooper Davis, why wouldn't he be all smiles? You know, we talk about that slow start, Mac, of Coopers, but, you know, this is our sixth event, but he does have four top tens already this season, so it may not be as flashy as everybody, but Cooper's all right. The only reason we talked about it being a slow start is because he's just come off of winning a world championship in 2016, and you just expect that to continue. Last guy to ride this bull was Cooper Davis. And this is going to be close because Cooper Tires Brown Sugar does his job, but does he give enough bull underneath a pair of sea -Doo to score 87 and three quarters? I think so, man. I, that he just rode him so perfectly that it almost takes away from the bull a little bit. That bull he had did a it. good day. He did it, partner. Sorry to interrupt. 88 and three quarters. Eduardo Aparecido has been able to win Kansas City in back-to-back -back years. Oh, man, I love I love it when the guys rise to the occasion. Davis and Aparecido both, they were the top bull riders all weekend long, and they finished off the event equally as well. We have four men who go perfect three for three, but Eduardo Aparecido's total gives him the victory. You have to hand it, it is not only his fourth career win, but he defends that championship that we talk about, those valuable points in a championship round and on a weekend when the world number one does not do well. Look at the guys that are gonna close the gap on Jess Lockwood. This world rankings, they're gonna be close. Let's send it down to Leah. The smile says it all, Eduardo. Congratulations on the win. How special is this? Thank you, Leah. That's who is winning this event. Thank you, Chad's good boot. That's her. Thanks, my friends. Thank you, everybody. Well done. Congratulations. Eduardo Aparecido doing his best to convey his emotions and let's give you the Kubota Tractor's ride of the night. It's the clinching ride. Yeah, Brown Sugar does it for the guys again. Been a good bull. Eduardo, there was never any doubt about this ride. He had him from the time the shoot gate opened. A couple weeks ago, Eduardo Aparecido was better than everyone in the 15-15 bucking battle. Sixth in the world coming into this weekend. That is definitely gonna change. You have always said this is a guy that should be on everyone's radar to win a world championship. Yeah, I've always thought if Eduardo would believe in himself as much as I believe in him, he'll be the world champion. I think you're starting to see that belief. It's starting to take hold. This guy's getting very confident, just like we talked about last season with Cooper Davis. When a guy gets confident, he can do it. You led me into my next question. Our defending PBR world champion, Cooper Davis, definitely came into his own this weekend. Yeah, and he's starting to, you see, he's starting to get that fire back mm -hmm. a little bit. Get one good ride down, he said, man, I like that a lot. And he wants another <laughs> one and another one. And that's how it turns into putting a streak of good rides together. J-Dub Shorty, we just saw Max Gruden face. That means he's excited. What are you guys taking away from the weekend? I'll tell you what I took away from it. I took two things. Silvano's getting hot, but so is Cooper Davis. Cooper Davis 
did what he had to do. He's got things back. He swapped spurs up. He's back in the groove, Shorty. Yeah, absolutely. A, a rough weekend on the guys, you know, overall. A lot of injuries this weekend, but you're right. And one thing that I noticed in both of those two guys, they're getting hot, but they're also wearing a smile. And part of that wearing a smile is, is being successful. It's, it's easy to get caught up in the game. Get discouraged because of all the things you got to go through when you're getting bucked off, things aren't going good. But when you can come here and have fun, it makes it easier to win. I think that world champion hangover has gotten over with. There I think go. he's over it, guys. Well, he started the show, or we started the show, by showing Cooper with his son, Maxton. And he's always been very grounded, hasn't he, in his approach? Yeah, absolutely. I, I talked to him before the event started. He couldn't wait for it to get over because he said he was going on vacation with the family. It's a good way now to go celebrate a good weekend, kind of relax, be ready for next weekend. Cooper standing by with Leah. And Mac, the three of us are standing by, Craig and Cooper. I want to talk to you about something that you read this week at the gym. Motivation will die, let discipline take, it, take its place. What did that do for you? Uh, you know, I think you can uh, you can get all caught up in, in everything that you've had success in. And uh, that's whenever you have to let the discipline take its place. And, and uh, no matter what's happened in the past, you just have to keep working towards it. And it sounds like you were in the gym this week. So what specifically are you trying to do right now? Uh, you know, I'm just trying to get stronger every week. And uh, I got down to a weight that was too low at one point. Now I'm feeling healthy and feeling right where I need to be. And uh, just keep doing better. Congratulations. Great weekend. Thank you. Shorty mentioned before his ride the mellow factor of Cooper Davis. And you can hear it in his voice. Nothing is going to change that unflappable personality. Jess Lockwood, guess what? He's only 385 points ahead of Rubens Barbosa. Cooper Davis, he's now in fifth overall. Eduardo Aparecido, the big winner this weekend, and the point totals show it. He is now only 618 points out of the world number one spot. Join us for the Frontier Communications Iron Cowboy from Arlington, Texas, next Saturday at 10 Eastern, right here on CBS Sports Network. For Justin McBride, Leah Garcia, Shorty Gorham, J.W. Hart, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. This has been a presentation of the PBR in association with CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.